Workers at Japan's damaged nuclear plant have detected unusually high levels of radioactive substances off the coast of the facility. Plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company isn't ruling out the possibility that contaminated groundwater is seeping into the sea. TEPCO workers tested samples from a port near Fukushima Daiichi. They found the water contained 10 times more radioactive tritium than previous samples. But they said the figure is still less than 1 50th of the government set safety limit. Workers found tritium and strontium exceeding the safety level earlier this month in water drawn from a well near one of the plant's reactors. TEPCO managers say they'll re-examine the data from the sea and well water. They hope to determine whether polluted groundwater is reaching the ocean. They say if that's happening, they'll use chemicals to reinforce the ground and stop the seepage. Researchers have been analyzing data about Fukushima Daiichi from every angle they can think of. Now, a team of Japanese and U.S. scientists have created a map showing how one radioactive substance spread after the accident. The researchers used data collected by aircraft. Their map illustrates the spread of iodine-131, which can cause cancer. The red section indicates areas most heavily contaminated three weeks after the accident. The map also illustrates how the iodine spread to the northwest. Iodine has half-life about eight days. Up until now, researchers had not been able to accurately calculate how much had leaked and how far it has spread. Health authorities are conducting periodic checks of people from Fukushima who are 18 and under at the time of the accident. Scientists in Japan have made a mistake in calculating the radiation exposure for thousands of people following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Government officials say more than 16,000 residents received incorrect estimates. The officials have been carrying out an ongoing survey among Fukushima Prefecture's 2 million residents. They asked them to fill out forms about their activities during the first four months following the nuclear accident. Scientists at a radiological institute use the forms to calculate exposure estimates. Officials give residents their results as the data comes in. They say among those who got faulty estimates, more than 12,000 people were given figures up to 0.4 millisieverts lower than what was actually correct. They say the scientists based the calculations on wrong dates in a computer program. Fukushima officials say even with the correct figures, it's unlikely the estimated dosage would pose a health risk. The annual limit for radiation exposure for the general public in Japan is 1 millisievert. Workers in western Japan have been unloading containers carrying nuclear fuel. It's the first shipment to arrive in the country in more than two years since the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The fuel came from France and is bound for the Takahama power plant of the Sea of Japan coast. It's a mixture of reprocessed uranium and plutonium called MOX. The same type of fuel had powered four Japanese reactors, but those facilities were idled after the nuclear disaster. The operator of the Takahama plant wants to use the fuel in one reactor. It's still offline, but officials say they'll seek permission to resume operations when new safety guidelines take effect next month. Executives from the utility that runs Japan's damaged nuclear plant have heard a familiar request from some of the people who hold stakes in their firm. Shareholders for Tokyo Electric Power Company have spoken up at an annual general meeting. They've demanded TEPCO get out of the nuclear energy business now. More than 300 investors called on TEPCO to dismantle all its nuclear facilities. The company owns and operates Fukushima Daiichi. All I want to ask is that they dismantle the nuclear plants. We can't ensure their safety. TEPCO executives said the company has now recorded the loss for three consecutive years. They've had to compensate people affected by the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. They say the rising price of fuel has hurt their bottom line too. TEPCO executives told shareholders they have no plans to dismantle all nuclear facilities. They said nuclear energy is essential for a stable supply of electricity. Engineers decommissioning the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant may be able to start removing fuel rods from the reactors sooner than they expected. Officials with the government and the plant's operators say they want to speed up the process. 
The officials got together to approve changes to their roadmap for decommissioning the plant. They brought forward their timetable for the four reactors disabled in the earthquake and tsunami in, two, in March 2011. But they warned the work could fall behind schedule because engineers don't know the state of melted fuel inside the reactors. The revised roadmap has different timelines for removing fuel from the number one, two, and three reactors. Number four was offline at the time of the accident. We have a separate plan for each reactor. So, we're ready to make the right decisions. The officials also decided to form an organization to ask people in the region how they think the work should proceed. This roadmap is just a start. The most important thing is to get the results under the roadmap. Officials say decommissioning work, including tearing down reactor buildings, could take as long as 40 years.